take note. Okay. Okay. All right. And of course, affiliation is a different thing. Okay. All right. Go on. Okay. So for our dragon baby, rabbit, and then, you know, uh, we are no dragon. We are still not rabbit. Right. Hey, sorry. This one is all messed up. I forgot about the, 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 the oh the no. Animation. There's yeah, so okay, much. Okay. You're scaring me. You're scaring me. Okay. <laughs> You know, when I was doing this, I had to... Okay, both Faith and I, we have a dragon kid. So when I was doing mm. this, I tell you my heart really, really dropped. Now, you, like now you click to show me, my heart also dropped. Yeah. Okay, so parents, if you have a dragon baby like us, okay, the time is kind of like not on our side. So now we are still like rabbit year. And then because this coming months, right, are like holiday... And you will find that your P5 child is also in a holiday mood. Even if your P4 child, the holiday mood is even like <laughs> set in. Okay. Yeah. So we we so you you we will have to be aware because we are the adults. So as adults, we are supposed to be like the more more like the secretary of the family, I guess. At least from my family, it is. So I like to take note. Okay. So much I know is the first written assessment. It's also our first uh super holiday program, all right? Um for the dragon babies, right? Okay, I don't know whether you know this, but maybe I bring your attention, okay. The May to June, this seven to eight weeks, uh, this this one here is actually the uh like yeah, I, I'll talk about the P5 exam results. I like that question very much. Okay. Uh so the the May to June, right, is like the SA1 P6, but a lot of schools don't have SA1. But however, you will find that the schools will still roll it out because they want to expose the children to the examination questions. But just to take note, for P6, right, none of the exams are weighted except for prelim and PSLE. So report book, you will just see a final grade. Okay, so none of the exams are weighted. And um, your kids know it. All right, so you can imagine when you talk to them about goal setting and getting ready for exam, the exam readiness, it may not be in the direction that you want. Okay, so you have to have a lot of conversations and a lot of uh, counseling to your children about this. Okay, okay, then uh, after then during June holidays, uh, this is where things very fast. June to August. Okay, parents, do you all know that the first PSI paper is in August? They all know that PSI hours in August. And if your child is P5 next year, then uh, also same thing, the first major exam will come. So August is typically like a, also like a SA2 paper one, paper four, sorry, paper four, all right? So it's the same period. So you can see from June to August is only 11 weeks. So if your child asks, Daddy, mommy, can I travel? Okay. Hey, mind the way. Can Bring your textbooks. All the Bring your textbook. Bring the no, blue tree. No, bring your textbook and blue tree <laughs> worksheet. What assessment book? <laughs> oh, I know, I know. Your book, your book, and my book. Okay. Yeah, actually, I had a, I had a conversation, you know, with uh Faith before. I said, yeah, we can bring our kids to travel, no problem. Got one science teacher, then got one math teacher, <laughs> then got one English teacher also. What? My husband, huh? <laughs> yeah, your husband. <laughs> Only Chinese, huh? Okay, okay, can. Okay, let's book. So bring that teacher. <laughs> okay, so take note of the timeline. All right, so this is not to scare you, lah, but just reality check, really. Okay, all right, let me go on. Yeah, the, the grading looks different. Yeah, P4 to P6. Okay, prelims, huh? these are your Okay, so these are the things. Okay, these are the good uh testimonial that we have. Did your baby here? Yeah, so he's one of our very popular teacher. Okay, so he's very effective and always able to have miracles. <laughs> and the children really like him. Okay, now he's going to be called the bubble tea teacher because he always buy bubble tea for the kids. <laughs> and I always tell him, don't buy the kids. Okay, here we have, thank you, Salih is here. Thank you for your very good feedback, your, your good testimonial. All right, so this parent very nice, left us very good testimonial. Okay, um, you can see that our teachers really try very hard and they are very, very good at coaching their stu the students and helping them to improve. Okay, sometimes, yes, I know that uh, you wish that the improvement comes very fast, but it takes two hands to clap. And also, uh, yeah, the, the P4 to P5 that jump is real. Okay, I'll talk about this very soon. Okay, primary science. All right. 
So these are the total number. Anyway, yeah, first I want to address this question. Yeah, why is there a big job? Okay. Okay, so the big reason, right, parents, okay, is because at P4, right, there are less chapter, less content. And for science, right, everything is just basic. Less demanding questions, very, very scaffolded. So P5, right, everything is just uh deeper and wider. It's like wider and deeper. And I know that some of your children, they have uh, tuition, you know, and they have help, but still the results didn't seem to, uh, you know, to show, right? So one example is my own girl. My daughter's result also did. She also dropped. And um, of course, because for me, maybe because I'm a teacher, so I didn't react. And I look at her papers and I see what are the questions that she cannot answer and she can answer. And it was very clear to me that she hasn't, um, she's not, she's not, uh, how should I say, um, trained enough, all right, and she's not ready, all right, to tackle the question. So in a way, for me, the papers was very good to tell me her strength and weakness. And I will assure you that, yes, there's enough time, all right? There is enough time to build the content knowledge, the skills, and your, your child has to be very consistent and has to really cooperate and do homework, okay? So the one big key later I will talk about is this consistent revision. Right. Okay. Yeah. And you also find that the teacher's marking is more strict. We all notice that. Okay. So the teachers will tell you that they are marking in accordance to the PSLE marking standard. Uh, but actually the truth is because the questions have translated into more advanced. So therefore the marking seems more strict, but actually it's not because the marking is more strict parents. It's just that the questions are more advanced now. And Yes, practice is the keyword. Right, this is the total number of topics. Okay, there are 32 of them. All right, do you know that uh, the number of topics here? So if your child is in primary six, these are the topics that your child will learn next year. Okay, right, this is the one that your child will learn next year, right? These forces, interactions, energy forms, uh, and energy in food. Now, these four topics are extremely important. If your child is going P5 next year, all right, then uh, you will see that systems, all right, this one here, right, the topics will all be tested. Okay, if there are primary three, primary four parents here, if your child is going primary three, primary four next year, please take note that this topic will be taken out. No more uni of life. So if your child is in primary three, primary four next year, this is totally taken out. They will be learning a totally new syllabus. All right, okay. Okay, let me erase this. You know, after Zoom changed the whole thing, uh, I don't know where's my eraser, and then I get very <laughs> lost. <laughs> okay. Yeah, let me go on. Okay, so the exam format, as we know, there are 28 MCQs and 12 open-ended, one hour and 45 minutes. Now, why am I telling you this? Now, a lot of times, right, our primary five, uh, okay, so another big thing, why primary four to primary five, the marks drop. Primary five to primary six, sometimes the marks will drop again, okay? So why? It's because your child, right, is not used to doing the paper within one hour and 45 minutes. So if you really watch your child do the papers, you will realize that a lot of time they will say, oh, I want to go to the toilet. Uh, I want to eat something. I do not know whether you have ever, ever timed your child, all right, at home with the paper, uh, the full exam paper. You will notice a lot of small habits that you never noticed before. A lot of children like to play with their stationery, or they like, or the way they flip their paper, you know, or they may even draw, okay? So all these are so-called the uh, exam readiness skills, all right? So you are, uh, in order to prepare our children, right, for PSLE, right, you really have to, what I will always say, build the exam stamina. How do you build exam stamina? Now, some children, you can just tell them, nah, finish the paper. After that, let papa, mama, mama. Okay, a lot of us, a lot, of, a lot of parents, we wish that we can do this. But I will tell you that that's not the most ideal. Okay, most of the children cannot do that. And in fact, when you tell them this, right, they'll either rush through the paper, okay, or they will not do it uh, within the, the time uh, that you want, all right? This one hour, 45 minutes, they will probably rush through or they will drag until two hours or they will break into two days, booklet A, day one, booklet B, day two, you know, so... It's never the most ideal that we want, okay? So you have to know your child before you give any exam practice. If your child is not a focused one, 
and your child is easily distracted. You cannot like, say, nah, give you the paper and finish it in one hour, 45 minutes. You can't. You actually need to train the exam stamina. You need to sit down beside your child without distraction. You cannot use your phone, all right? So this is actually how I train my own daughter because my child, she's not very um, focused as well. She's also easily distracted, okay? So I have to train her. You know, I sit beside her. I didn't use my phone. You can read a book, all right? You can do something else that's also paper related, but you cannot use your phone. The phone is a big, big distraction, right? So uh, exam stamina, yes, very important, all right? Okay, so why is science very hard to score? These are the common questions by parents, right? Uh, is this also your question? Yeah? Okay, all right. So here, let me just go through uh, with you. Uh, why? Uh, okay, now first, upper primary, uh, one hour, 45 minutes. So these are the common struggle, okay? So at primary five, right? So this is also one reason why you see that the marks drop. The, your child may not be able to handle um combo question, okay, dual concepts. For example, like heat plus properties of material, electricity plus magnets, right? They are unable to link the concept to open-ended question. The topics are actually more in depth. There are more concepts coverage. So you need to have real life experience, like active thinking. You realize that a lot of times when your child is doing the science questions, there's no active thinking. Yeah, truly, I will tell you that there isn't because I'm speaking from experience. They are just thinking, I uh, just another question, let me finish it. But that is not active thinking. And when it comes to the upper primary question, right, your child really need to be actively thinking what the question is asking for. If your child is having uh, taking that kind of approach, it's very hard to score above AL4. Uh, sorry, uh, yeah, above AL4. Okay, so this is something uh, also important to train, right? Next one, they are may not be aware of the marks of the format. Okay, so you'll be surprised. Uh, some children at primary six, right, they can still tell me that, oh, uh, this kind of question, right, is two marks. But this type of question, usually like, let's say, explain question, application question. In PSLE, they are usually only one mark. And you need to provide a lot, a very long answer to just get that one single mark. Because when they go up to primary five, primary six, the expectations of the teachers and the markers and the paper is that you are already in upper primary. You should know this. You should know this concept. Because many of the concepts are actually basic concepts, P3, P4, and it's all wrote in. Okay, so they will not award marks if you are, you know, like answering or uh, using a P4 concept. They won't. Okay, because they're sitting for a PSLE paper. So this is something, again, uh, the kids have to be aware. All right? Okay. Okay, next one. Okay, they're unconsciously making mistakes. You realize that your child will always tell you, ah, I'm just careless. Have you heard of this? They always say, I'm careless. But why are you so careless? Right? What we want to know is why? Why are you so careless? How come you, you know, you chose the, this answer, you can write this answer, but you shape another answer. What was happening? Okay, so we call this poor exam skills. A lot of our children have very poor eye hand-eye coordination or n eye hand coordination, whichever you want to say, because they are not very active like where we were, right, when we were young. But exam, right, doing the exam, it requires actually very good eye hand coordination because the paper, one question, is broken into many parts. And many times your child already forgot whatever that is ahead or the eyes are unable to follow the question stem that is um, before the question. So they have very poor eye-hand coordination. They actually forgot. And then plus the fact that you, they do not like to analyze and annotate, right? They don't like to annotate. They don't like to make their thinking visible, right? They just put everything inside and then, okay, this is the answer. But it just can't work because the paper is extremely long. It requires very, very like meticulous uh, skills and real focus in order for you to score. So if your child don't have enough practice and your child have poor exam skills, um, therefore the results is usually probably not in the direction that you would like. Okay. Of course, uh, unfamiliar with the open-ended question, all right, the like the ABC technique and the uh use of the keywords. Yeah, yes, mommy says that annotation is important. Yeah, at Blue Tree, we do um uh emphasize a lot, but uh, you know, at home, parents, you must continue to remind. Don't let them get away. Don't let them get away. Don't like, oh, you finished already, okay. All, all correct, very good. Don't, don't do that. Even if they get all correct, you see that they did not annotate. You must insist. So for example, uh, some of my children's uh, big blue tree students, they finish all the MCQ 28 and then uh, they got all correct. I don't let them get away. I tell them you never annotate. 
you annotate five questions for me, then you can go. You don't have to ask them to annotate 28, but you have to ask them to at least try and annotate some of it. Okay, because if you let them get away, then they will never learn it, right? So it's like practice, okay? So you put them back and then let ask them to uh, practice the skills. Okay, okay. so what are some of the solutions? Okay, now, if your child is scoring MCQ less than 48 marks, okay? So this tells you that your child likely has a conceptual understand, uh, misunderstanding, okay? There's a poor conceptual understanding. Okay, so in this case, right, in order for you, okay, to um, uh, improve on this, right, you have to ask your child to read the learning notes, right? Uh, science is a concept-heavy subject, content-heavy subject. And to be very honest, okay, uh, the school teachers won't tell you, but I will, okay, uh, children with better memory will always have an upper hand in science. So if your child's memory is not so good, right, you have to find ways to ask your child to recall the concepts. Concepts understanding is very important and to be able to remember all of them is crucial because without the concepts, your child cannot answer the open-ended question. Your child also cannot score in the MCQ because the entire MCQ section is all about concepts. So a lot of times, right, you think that your child got it or the children think that they got it, but they don't. You ask deeper, you ask more, they can't answer you. What they know is just on the surface. So always go deeper, all right? Ask them more, all right? Uh, ask them to do mind maps, right? Ask them to do their own learning notes. Quiz them in the car. Um, have songs, you know, different ways, okay? Different children have different ways. So in Blue Tree, you know, for me, right, I when I want to help the children to learn the concepts, I will always sing, right? So I use the songs to ask them to uh, remember, you know, uh, the, the concepts that I'm trying to teach. So some of the songs like gain heat from and lose it to and gain heat from and lose it to. So I will keep singing. I do that to my girls, so, okay? Other ways are like using acronyms, like for the water industry, it's uh, WCLCW. Right, so these are some of the different ways, okay? W, O, W, wow, the factors that affect germination. So the only way out is to have consistent revision. Uh, consistent revision. To score in MCQ, right, parents, I recommend your child to do three MCQ papers in a week. Three MCQ papers in a week, including the holidays, especially if next year your child is taking PSLE. Consistent revision is extremely important. Okay, I'm going to answer some questions. Uh, the PPC course I'll answer later. All right, so one parent asked me, uh, does the examiner award marks according to the keywords being presented despite that the flow of thoughts may not be smooth? The answer is no. Okay, uh, uh, I'm going to uh, answer this, Mr. Wong. All right, the answer is no. Okay, so they do not just mark according to the keyword. They actually mark according to the concept presented. But the keywords helps to communicate the concept accurately. So a lot of parents uh, think that the marking scheme is solely based on keywords. It's not. It's actually based on concepts. All right, They make it very clear, MOE. But the keywords make it a lot easier to communicate the concepts accurately across. Okay, And um, the keywords, I would say, is like the science vocabulary. Every subject has their own vocabulary, math, Chinese, English, um, science, all of them, all right? So some parents, you know, like for example, depression. If I say the word depression, what do you think? Oh, uh, some form of mental illness or the state of mind, right? That's, that's what we know. But depression in science means the depth, the dents make. And in fact, it's an experiment, a uh, very common experiment term. We use the word depression because we want to measure the dance, the ball, you know, make a mark very uh, clearly. And it was actually in PSLE tested before. So if your child is not familiar with the keyword depression, of course your child will cannot understand and your child cannot get the answer. That's why you all think that it's keywords, but it's not, okay? Uh, simply said, it's also con it's linked to concept understanding as well. Will wrong spelling affect the marks? Uh, no, uh, a quick answer is no. But if the wrong spelling, okay, uh, is a uh, real word, then yes, it's zero. So for example, like some children will spell digestion as um, like digestion, the E, they spell as A, digestion is correct. But some children will spell as digression, D-I-G-R-E-S-S, -S, digress, cannot, because that's an actual English word. 
So as long as it doesn't constitute to a real word, then your child will get the marks. But this one, we usually don't tell the kids because children, okay, parents, uh, children, our children are very innocent, right? They're always black or white, actually. Okay, because it's their cognitive development. Cognitively, they're always black or white. That's why playing mobile games, exposing them to movies that's like uh, NC-16, M-18, you know, violence, it doesn't, it doesn't help their brain development. It confuses them because they are still a very black and white. And if you give them anything that's gray, it mess up their brain and they don't know how to operate. Yeah, so this is the cognitive development. So uh, usually I, I won't tell them, I tell them, learn your spelling, all right? Do your science spelling regularly. Yeah, parents, you can do science spelling at home. So one of the things I do is I do a lot of science spelling with my children, okay? I ask them, how do you spell photosynthesis? How do you spell cell membrane? You know, just quick ones. Like when I'm washing the dish, I will say, did they come? Spell cell membrane for me. Spell cytoplasm for me. <laughs> so when I'm washing my dishes, in that five minutes, I've tested like 15 words. You know, and it tells me how much she knows the keyword because if she knows her keywords well, there's a high chance that she probably also knows some of the concepts pretty well. Okay, but if she struggles with the keywords, you know, she cannot uh, tell me the mark, uh, the, the exact spelling. Ah, uh, this topic maybe not so strong. Okay, I need to go back and revise with her. Okay, yeah. Okay, so for weak command of language, right? Yeah. Uh, for weak command of language, right? Memorize, must memorize keywords, memorize key phrase. Yeah, and a lot of reinforcement. Okay, um, my daughter is dyslexic. Yeah, parents, okay? So in case you think I just dyslexic. So my challenge is not less than you. So the only way for her to score AL, uh, you know, like she's recently scored AL3 for her P5 SA2 is really a lot of consistent practice. Okay, correct. Right, next one. Okay, open-ended. If your child fail, all right, check the MCQ score first, Okay. If they fail open and the right parents, work on the MCQ. All right, work on the MCQ. Make sure that the MCQ is above 50 marks. Make sure the MCQ is above 50 marks. A lot of children will go like, huh, really? I can score 56 upon 56? Yes, they can. All right, PSLE uh, section A is very possible to get full marks. Give this expectation to your child. Okay, don't be afraid to set uh, expectation that is above what your child is doing now. Because if you lowball the expectation, guess what? You're like, oh, mommy only expect me to pass. Okay, well, I just work for pass. Then what do you realize? <gasps> what you got 45? You know, you're, we humans are always like that. You aim for the stars and you're always landing on the clouds. So our children are also the same, okay? So it's okay. Tell them, aim 60, all right? Then you'll find that, hey, they get 50 plus. Aim 56, very likely they'll get 48 to 50, which is very decent, which is very good. Okay. So uh do the MCQ if your child uh, didn't do very well for open ended. Strengthen the knowledge questions first. So what are knowledge questions? What is the function of cell wall? What's the function of cell membrane? What is photosynthesis? What is digestion? So these are knowledge count questions. Uh, is that a dictionary of keywords? Yes. Uh Singy, we have a dictionary of keywords, it's in our website. Yeah, it's under learning resource. So we give all these things for free. You just have to go in and print out everything. <laughs> it, can, it can become a book already, right? Okay, Telegram we also have a lot of things in Telegram, right? Okay, yeah. All right, so 22 to 28 uh, marks, strengthen key phrase, keywords, exam skills. So really look at your child. What are the exam skills that your child is employing? Does your child highlight? Does your child analyze and annotate? Okay, I know. And I say highlight, a lot of parents say cannot highlight. Can highlight. Highlight question, okay. Okay, cannot highlight answer, all right? Okay, so uh, check your child's exam skills. Does your child uh can your child focus for a good half an hour? You you have to know you have to really really observe your child. Is your child uh, always turning around during examination or a lot of movement? You know all these things. Okay, so you need to train their exam stamina, right? If you want uh twenty, if your child is at twenty eight to thirty four, all right, then uh what happens is you can strengthen your child's analytical skills and then using the right answer techniques, right? So these are some of the solutions. But really, for any student, right, parents, MCQ is extremely important. I will really recommend you to do the three times a week. And some of the parents will say, because so much paper, man, not enough paper to do. Okay, can always redo. Redo the papers. All right, so uh, I do that. So for example, 
uh, because there's no more SA1 now, so I recycled the papers. So the papers that I did with my daughter in term one, I kept them. And then after that, term four, I redo it. And guess what? She can still make the same mistake. <laughs> All right? So you don't expect them to, you know, finish the paper. You think that, oh, all's good. You know, they can remember. No problem. No. Our kids need repetition. They need reinforcement. Okay. Yeah. All right. Okay. Next one. Okay. Okay. Let me go on to here. Okay. So I'm going to show you one typical P5 question. Okay. Okay. Do you spot the difference? Now, this question, if it's in P4, all right, okay, usually uh, they will give one mark for this answer with a choice, okay? Just one mark, okay, based on which material is the porous conductor of heat, like that, material G, okay? P4, they'll get one mark. But P5, what do you realize? The word, the magic word, explain. <laughs> then after that, your child realized he has or she has to refer to the experiment question. So much information. Where am I supposed to look? You know, some children are like, huh? what is this? Got diagram. Huh? Got numbers, so many numbers. Got time, got temperature. Where am I supposed to look? Okay, so parents, you must understand that science questions are not easy. There is a lot of information to analyze. If you find easy is because you're an adult and we have already had these skills, you know, like uh, where to look, you know, first, how to break down a question. But if your child is a new P5, you know, and um, and never thought of this, you know, how to break down the question, your child is going to go like, and coupled with exam anxiety, not easy at all, okay? Right, okay? Uh, got one parent asked, should I uh, print only the recent year's paper in case the question get outdated? Uh, okay, uh, mommy or daddy, actually, honestly, it doesn't matter. Even if the question is outdated, right, likelihood the concept tester is okay one. Yeah, but yeah, like recent year's paper. So recent years would be like uh, these two years. These two years is good. Okay, yeah. Okay, here, here. All right. Then also the other thing is you realize that this question is what we call a compare or I cry question. Why is it a compare or I cry? Because the child has to use comparison terms. And if your child's language is an issue, very likely they don't like to use the comparison term. So if I put this together, it's only one mark. Most of the time uh, when I teach my P5s, they were like, <laughs> oh, okay, yeah. Then at the end of P5, they just accept that it is the way that it's going to be. But some of the P5s, especially boys, uh, they will take a while, okay? <laughs> you will see that they can only write this in uh, Term 1, P6, right? But they will get there. The, thing, the key thing is they do get there, okay? All right, so another example, similar question, all right? Similar question, all right? So you will see that same question, uh, but you see I can ask a different answer, a different question. Based on this same question, right? But now I'm asking you give an example, right? So uh would okay, so they will have to like apply it to real life and then again the explain question. Okay, so the P5 questions are very demanding. P6 question even more demanding. <laughs> okay, yeah, okay. So PSLE should do P yes, uh for PSLE next year, so for the dragons next year, do P5 and CQ this holiday. Mommy, daddy, go and print all the SA2 papers. Ask them to do this holiday. How many times? Three papers a week. Okay. Now you might be thinking, ah, why am I so specific? Why three papers a week? Ah? I've already researched this for a long time. Okay. Because very likely, your child will not do three papers. Very likely won't. Or you also won't be able to supervise. Yeah. Okay. So one of the secrets that I learned from parents, right, with children, uh, with uh with children who scored very well in exam, right? These parents are they are very very consistent. They really rain or shine, right? They really make sure that their kids do the work. So I myself I cannot even have that kind of consistency sometimes because I I want to play, you know, I want to go out with my friends, you know, and or or got some parties or dinners. But three papers a week means that. It is, you need to work around this, right? Okay, so most of the time, your child can only do one paper per week, all right? And that is actually not ideal, right? But um, 
if your child can manage a second paper, ah, okay, quite good actually. Yeah. If third paper, best. So the three papers is like good, better, best. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yes. Uh, two zero two three end of the year papers. Correct, Wendy. Yeah. P four also let them do. Just let them continue to do it. You know, it's like our cars. You know, when we go overseas, what happens when you go overseas for a long time? What happens to your car? Your car breaks down, right? It's the same. So our children, you imagine they never do any work for six weeks. Six weeks, no work. When they come back, how about yourself? Right? Like yourself also, after a holiday, do you want to work? No, right? You need a holiday to get over another holiday. Right? You tell yourself, I don't want to go to work today. I am uh, here. Or, oh, I don't want to go, go later. You also find yourself, your entry very hard to start. It's the same. You don't have to even talk about kids. So our P6 children, when they come back to us, or P5 children, when they come back to us, right, they can't start their engine. They, they are just thinking, it's holiday, what am I doing work? But if they have been consistently doing their work, consistently, they'll be like, oh, it's just another day, you know? So we want them to don't, don't, don't suddenly start your child on a very intense revision mode. Don't suddenly go like, oh, next week, uh, exam, uh, study, 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 every day, uh, stay at home, uh, do your work, do treat papers. Uh, we can't do that. You need pacing. Okay, you need pacing. All right, keep the momentum going. Yeah, thank you, teacher Faye. Keep the momentum going. All right. Okay, here. Okay, here. Right, so this is a PSLE question. And you see this question is a combo question. And this question requires heat gain and uh, electrical system. Okay, now this is a real life question, parents. We see such outdoor restaurants all the time in Singapore. All the time. So, um... There was once that I went to the zoo. You know, the zoo has this outdoor cafe. You know, the Arming Cafe. I don't know whether y'all bring your children to the zoo. I mean, that's one of my favorite places. Uh, I'm a science teacher. So I bring them to the outdoor cafes, you know, to eat. And then my girl noticed that, eh, how come I mean the fan automatically suddenly just turned on? Nobody went to turn on. You know, she just, just suddenly, suddenly just spinning on its own. I said, oh, the temperature must be very high now. Okay, so parents, when it's a very hot day, especially in Singapore, what happens? the metal contacts here will expand. Then they will touch each other and then form a closed circuit. Ah. So this is a real life example. And if you don't bring your kids out or you bring your children out, do make sure you engage in active thinking conversations in real life okay, situation. Um, uh, sometimes when I'm eating, having dinner with my kids and uh, you know they want time on the phone, yeah, they want time on the phone. And I'm guilty of that as well. Okay, so I will just quickly, you know, turn their attention and say, hey, how come the French fry is so crispy? Ah? What do you think they did? Ah? <laughs> I'll just give like a scenario or I just try to do math, you like, know, like faith way. Hey, uh, calculate uh, the, the whole dinner bill. How much do we think that it's going to be? And now if let's say I have four tables, how much will it be? <laughs> you know, just a quick math and quick real situation. Right, um, to engage your kids, okay, because it really matters at the end. The PSI papers, parents are getting more and more uh, real life application, more and more, all right? Okay, so in Blue Tree, we actually use this ABC technique, all right? So I'm going to show you, all right, how we use this effectively in explain question and why our Blue Tree students, right, keep telling you ABC, 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 because it's something that we drill in our kids and we want them to practice, okay? So like this question is very common, right? How does the crow drink some water? Explain. Now, if children don't have the ABC technique, how do you think that they will answer? How would you answer, parents? You want to try? How would you answer? Are you thinking, oh, yeah, don't ask me to try. <laughs> Just say. <laughs> you want to try? How would you reply, answer this? Hey, this was a PSLE question, by the way. But it was in the MCQ. Hey, nobody tried. <laughs> Anyone want to give a shot? Okay, lucky lad. Okay, so just stay in there. Yeah, go on. Okay, so here. Hey, hey. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There will be a replay. Yes, there's a replay. Okay, here. So we say that the crows will put some pebbles into the bottle, right? And then Pebbles, okay, which is the evidence, take up space that's occupied by the water, right? So this is the evidence, right? And therefore, the water level will increase. But you also, so some parents will say, how is this um, uh, evidence, teacher Joe, this is like keyword, because you see this phrase, right? Take up the space, okay? Yes and no. So some children will say that, 
the pebbles, all right, um, increase the volume, okay? Increase the uh, volume of the water. Is that correct? Can I say that the pebbles increase the volume of the, of the water? I mean, this is also a key phrase, right? This is also a key phrase, but is this correct? Wrong, right? Totally wrong. Totally wrong concept, okay? So this one should tells you that uh, while the keywords, yes, are important because like I say, they help to communicate the concept uh, correctly, accurately. More importantly is, does your child have a strong conceptual understanding? That's actually very important, all right? Okay, next one. Okay, another question, all right? Plant cell, okay, and then do you agree? Okay, so this one is the use of the science vocabulary, okay? This question is very straightforward. So there's no way around this except using the right science vocabulary because unit of life is a very keyword intensive topic, all right? Okay, so this is just one example, okay? All right, so the blue tree science approach, how do we help your child to get the marks that your child should have? So in blue tree, right, we use actually the learning book, all right, whereby we will teach the key ideas, the experiments, okay, because we believe that children should learn through play, children should be engaged. And of course, our weekly dozen, all right, will teach your child the keywords, the science vocabulary, the topical practice is where your child will practice, okay? So again, we emphasize a lot about consistent revision. We have concept focus, study notes, and of course, the exam practice, okay? So in, in Blue Tree, we have a very robust and a very complete structured approach to help your kids to get the marks that your kids is aiming for, okay? Yes, sometimes your, your children, like I say, don't seem to be um, improving uh, as what you hope, but our approach is, uh, I would say, very, very effective. We have like uh, 80, for science, is 86%, AL1 to 3 last year, Right, and 100% of our children actually improve. All right, so that's the good news. Okay. All right, so parents, goals grow. What matters? One step at a time, little by little, your steps will add up. Okay. All right, it's uh, teacher face turn now. <laughs> hi, hi, I'm here. I will share my slides. Yeah. So yeah, it's go ahead. easier. Yeah. Parents, any questions? <laughs> Do you have any questions for me? Yes, please go ahead yeah. and ask Teacher Jo the questions. You can type it into the chat. She will respond. Okay. How is it going, everybody? Please stay right to the end. We have something uh, very important to announce to you. Yeah, so stay to the end so that you can uh, find out what we have to give to you later, okay? All right, more about the primary math. Uh, I saw that there are some P4s amongst us like going on to P5 next year. So just a very quick uh, breakdown of what is added on for each year's syllabus. As you can see, P5 is really an avalanche of topics, boom, all into the P5 because P6 is a short runway. So they squeeze everything in P5. They can't do a lot in P4 because the P4 is not mature enough to handle some topics, you see, right? So P6, you have like pretty light topics, but uh quite 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 difficult to learn within a short time. So that's why we believe in having a head start program that we will start like now is already happening. So our P5 students uh, at our centers now are already learning P6 work starting this week. So if you're not enrolled with us yet, come and join us. Have a good feel of how the head start is like get the momentum going so that they can learn a little bit of what will happen next year. Okay. And then the, these are the main uh, big categories of the PSRE topics. Uh, so you don't see words like whole numbers, fractions, and decimals because they fall into the numbers category. You don't see topics like uh, volume, mass, length because they fall into the topic on measurement. So you can see that the ones that are highlighted in yellow is the largest component of 65%. Take a photograph of this very quickly. This is what you need to focus on when you're working with your children to ensure that they do score well because this is like the, the base of it, right? If you can secure it well, then you know 50% is all yours already. And then when you get the rest of the mark, you see data analysis is graph, uh, geometry is angles, algebra is only five marks, speed is five marks. So put together, it's quite easy to score 75 marks, right? As a base. 
So if we handle these topics well, it's quite easy to scale out and get 85 marks, right? And in order to score AL1, we are looking at refine the skills, problem solving techniques, and um less characteristics so that you can score get the maximum out of it. Okay, I hope I make sense. There are a lot of heuristics that you see your children learning from primary one right up to P6. But you see, P3 and P4, they have been given, given opportunities to look at these heuristics. It was not thrown at them at P5 suddenly. Suddenly, problem sum became very difficult. No, no, no. They have been given bite size of it in primary three, but the difficulty level is like level one. Very easy to manage, like a one-step, three-step problem sum, you know, that kind of thing. Then primary four, you get a couple more steps. And then primary five, it's still the same type of question, but they throw in ratio with it. They throw in ratio, they throw in percentage. And then by P6, yeah, they put two topics in one question. So that's how the same concept got leveled up, okay? What's 2024 in stock for you, right? <laughs> so if you join us in Blue Tree, you will actually learn um, uh, the technique that we use. We call it a soft technique where you learn, we teach the children how to answer the questions uh, step by step in a very systematic way. So whether you are... Uh, good at math or not or average or, or not scoring well you use these techniques to guide you through so it is always a mental checklist first i will search for the clues by reading and writing and executing the steps as i'm reading it okay take note that as i'm reading it you don't read the entire question from sentence on the, sen the fourth sentence and then it says okay what i supposed to do uh frankly some of the children lost track of it already so uh, this is a very efficient technique. It is very, very good, okay? Obtain evidence is where we will link up the information from what we have drawn or written, depending on the level, okay? Mid-level, lower level, they draw models. Higher level, upper primary, we might use like racial techniques, okay? And then you can connect information like four units is 20. Then what is next? This is the key to help you solve the mystery. It's like every time you look for one unit, or you look for one set of something, you are almost there to the last step to answer the question. All you need is to read the question again to know whether you're looking for boys and girls, area or perimeter, the shaded or the unshaded part, right? So a lot of children tend to miss out the info because they misread the question. And tic tac toe technique is one of our signature as well. We use it a lot in the upper primary to help them solve the question in a very efficient and systematic manner. So I have children's uh, testimonial is that, teacher, I can do it. But when I use your method, it became shorter, easier, even easier for checking, and that helps cut down time and careless listening. But however, I must tell you that whatever you learn, be it exercise or um, fixing a new toy or Lego or anything, it takes time to internalize. If, if you, you come in with like a one month before exam, two weeks before exam, uh, you can't master it. You know, you can do it, but probably not very confident. That's why model drawing starts from primary one. Model drawing starts from primary one because mastery level is needed in primary four. When the problem sums got really tough, they draw the model that they once learned in P1 to P3 and then put in all the big numbers and stack up the models a bit. They can solve it. So trust me that um, start early so that it helps them build confidence. Okay. P4 transiting to P5 and 6, take note of it now. Huh? So P4, right, you have one exam paper setting. Uh, some schools do practice like a close to a full paper. That means higher weightage, longer sitting time. Teacher Joe just want to mention that some kids now have no stamina. Why? They give the kids a 30 minutes test, 20 marks, and then that's it, you know, or a 20 minute test, right? And then that's all. It's called assessment. And by the time they reach primary five, the first time they ever see a full paper is the end of the year. And a P6C, another full paper, if they are lucky, is in May. But if the school don't practice that, then it is the first prelim papers. So if the children do not have a stamina of sitting through such long papers, they're going to get quite a shock, you know, at the end when they sit for the P6 uh, papers. And we do um, have a lot of such practices more put in place for the children to prepare them. 
for the exams. And at the same time, we do conduct more exams. Um, so look out for it at the uh, towards the end of the year. Okay, we won't do it now, but towards the end of um, like closer to PSRE and prelims. Okay, that we will do that for your children. Okay, so we have run through this. Oh, how come there's a so this is analysis. You can take a photograph. Uh, the hard work put in um by the the team of math math teachers to analyze how the questions are being set. Um, the coverage, the you can see that it's quite consistent over the years. That um, close to sixty percent of it on the red boxes, whole numbers, measurements, and ratio percentage. Okay. Next one. Oops, this is a repeat. So understand your child's strengths and weaknesses. Those who are sitting with us, uh, the P five, P four. I can't say it works for you because P four don't have a paper one and paper two. All right, but for those. P5 students sitting with us, um, the dragons, right? We're going on to P6. So this is like a rough gauge. Whether your child is uh, scoring 75% and above, we are looking at refinement stage, um, fine tuning, sharpening their skills. Yes, PPC program is good for you. What's PPC all about? Stay on to find out more, okay? And then for the mid range, 50% to 75%, we are looking at ways to help them do even better and for the 50% we would like to cross over to that 65 right remember the there's this 20 mark range of AL6 right we're trying to get them across to the 65 then they can go up to AL5 so practice more of uh, paper one and then paper two don't have to go so intense you can just practice the first 12 it works as well and then those who are scoring below 50% I strongly advise you to do even not more paper one, like what teacher Joe says, three practice paper set of paper one in a week. We are talking about fluency, building foundations, deeper concepts, and then knowing uh, the fundamentals. Because if you cannot even add two fractions together, and then you're trying to do paper two, right? There's struggle though. If you can't do conversion or rounding off in paper one, then you cannot get the final correct answer in paper two as well okay paper two of course you have some reading and conceptual uh, understanding of stuff but at the end you will still need to apply all the techniques in paper one put together so uh, this is how it looks like okay predictable knowledge all right and then compared to like less predictable skills so this is how like the things are a little bit different so one set is like okay something is quite easy for the children to accept conversion fractions to decimals, they can do it using the formula to find area of triangle, right? Then the less predictable skills is where the children tend to slip a little bit and find very difficult. This is the part where they find that um, they need to apply the knowledge in the problem sums. The area triangle question is no longer so direct. They overlap and then they talk about the ratio and shaded area. They said that we cover a lot of that in our regular lessons as well as the holiday program, okay? And then her P4 going on to P5. Yes, there's a calculator. And then we have the P5 uh, who has been using the calculator so often now the parents hate it and want to throw it out of the window, right? And then you go on to primary six. So you can see the questions like this. Uh, well, this is one of the uh, heavily uh, asked question in the Facebook chat group. Okay, we have a math discussion group and we do have a science discussion group, all right, by Blue Tree. So parents do ask questions, and this is one of the most commonly asked one. Do you know that the area A and B is the same? X and Y and E and F, right? So it's the same shape, you slide it across and everyone knows that um, this is the, the concept because visually it makes a lot of sense, right? But when this question is asked, it could not answer it. It's the same triangle, all right? Overlap one another, slide one across, and then they couldn't find the area of the shape region. Interesting. Yeah, so when let you have a look again. So when you look at the same shape, slide it across, and they say, oh, the shape A, like a, like a number seven, like a rifle, right? And then the other one is like an L, right? Inverted L. So A and B have the same area. X and Y have the same area. But why can't we tell that the next shape, Taylor region, does have a same area as... Do you all want to type in the chat what is the... How, how is that shaded area the same as another part of this uh, diagram? Anybody knows? This is really the most asked question every year in that chat group. 
every year i guarantee you every every exam period i have to answer it like twice someone said a b e h excellent a h e b a hip yes is correct so if we have the same triangle we slide it across yes you are right it has the same area and what we do is we're going to like slice it across and then that trapezium right will look like a triangle plus a rectangle what is this find the area of the composite figure composite figures means area two different shapes put together okay yeah so you can take a photo okay and you can revise this someday <laughs> when you look at it again so the b5 you probably now say, hey, we saw this question somewhere. And then P6, uh, by the time next year, P6, you go like, oh, how do you solve this? Yeah. Okay. All right. Go on to one more question. You can see that, yeah, my, my child learns about area of square, learns about area of triangle. Wait a minute. This shape doesn't have a triangle. Have you learned the formula of a kite? It's not, a dime. It's not like a kite shape in the middle, right? Then all the kids go like, no such formula, teacher never teach. Mm. Teaching out of syllabus again. No, so some effort needs to be put in and of course visual skills, all right? So you just draw a line across and then you can see why we teach the children line of symmetry, why symmetry is in the topic. Yeah, all these are important. So this is almost like two topic in one. Then you can see that it's like a mirror image, right? Yeah, and then... There you go. So you find the area of the square. You find the area of the right angle. Okay. Yeah, just a quick run through. And then we have the square minus the areas. Okay, let me just click on so that I think you're interested to find out <laughs> what, what it entails, right? Yeah, okay. All right, so how is P5 difficult? P5, P6 is made difficult because like what I showed you in the previous table, like you learn the basic of finding the area of the triangle. Yes, in that first year primary five, the first three months, the questions are that simple. But by the time you reach primary six, it will not be find the area of the triangle anymore. It's like, find the triangle if you can in a diagram. And very often they're going to see that like, semicircle where is it it's embedded somewhere then you need to add a line you need to do this you need to do that so of course we teach the basic concept all the time so we will teach the basic concept right right from the start and then it escalates and then it moves on and then it builds on but so that's why the whole learning is like a journey um we often have students who do the last minute enrollment which is like um three weeks before psre or one month before psre during that time, that one month, I, I, it's impossible to run through what uh, one has missed out in the last eight months, right? So it will be just potentially um, gearing them up for the battle by doing more practice questions. But in order to have a deeply grounded uh, concept foundation late, it has to be built over months. Yeah, like what teacher Joe say, you don't drive the car, right? The car will break down for it, you know. And same thing, why is it servicing maintenance is very much needed for the car on a monthly, uh, periodic basis. You know, service it when you already know, like it broke down by the roadside, then you service it. Yeah, you, you know that you're doing a lot of damage to the engine already. Yeah, so always like do it earlier. Same thing to our aircon, right? You don't wait till it's leaking, then you sur service it. You service it. Uh, regularly, two two months, uh, once every month if it's heavily used and things like that. Okay, all right. So you get a, a little idea of how uh difficult the questions could be. So this is very much you can see. I show you a lot of visual stuff. So what you know as rectangles, uh, angles are all there. But now they play the folding game. So when they fold, fold, fold. Wow, your kid need to visualize. What do you do at home, right? Uh, give him a piece of paper. Allow him to fall. This holiday, play with some origami. So these are the things when you are two weeks before PSRE, I say, teacher, how to, how to help with visual skills. If I say play with origami, all of you will kill me. I think this is like, what, what is teacher Faith talking about? Near exam, do origami. So why don't we do origami now? Do more of it now, okay? So that your child can be like really good at it when the time comes, okay?
All right. So they can get to see that the ankles get repeated and then because it folds and then the lines are the same, that's why it became an isosceles triangle. Yep, it is not spelled out to you. They will not tell you. It is using the visual scales and then they understand that uh, DE is equals to EF. All right. So I'm just going to show the solution very quickly and then you can take a photograph of it and analyze it later on. Okay, all right. I think it's here. Hey, there's a question, teacher Faith. What's the question? Okay. Jane uh, asked about, uh, need to know the basic concept before he can join the advanced class. Need to know algebra well. Mm -hmm. You need to learn algebra well. Algebra is a P6 topic. So we will cover the teaching of the P6 topics later, you know, in the lesson. But we are already doing it in the Head Start program this week. Well, for the advanced class, um, preferably uh, 75%, 80% and above, uh, speak to my team. You can uh, email us or message us at 9616-0312 and we'll give you more information on that. Okay. Advanced class will mean that, yes, the pace, is, uh, pace of teaching is faster and uh, more coverage on uh, depth of uh, the teaching. Okay. All right. Why have I had so much, so many logos? Okay. Can your child do it? Yes, of course. We are very, very confident that your child can do it. But I must say that it is very, very important that we help the children build this consistency. Okay. Oh, the advanced course is a regular program that goes on uh, throughout the year. Just that to be, uh, I labeled it as advanced such that uh, it, it will allow us to just zoom off at a pace that's suitable for the child. Okay, yeah, all right. And then a more, more in-depth discussion can happen uh, within uh, same group dynamics. So we have different programs. We have holiday program, we have weekly program uh, for different types of students. Let me see what's this. I can't see. Yeah, okay. Oh, if you do not know, we have secondary program, you know. We have secondary program for a few years already. We also have Chinese program and English program. So it's a one stop for all. Huh? So if you are looking for um, classes, that just speak to our team, okay? They will tell you a lot more about uh, what Blue Tree provides. Okay. Are there strategies to self study? It's a joke. Can self study or not? <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, I found one. <laughs> There are different types of dragons, lah. Let's put it this way. We are all made different, right? Uh, all right. Yeah. So yeah. Um. Okay, la, we, we we answer la, straight la. Most of the children cannot. <laughs> wow. Ouch. Okay, la, My dragon. Yeah. Also most most also can? cannot. Yeah. Yeah. But again, it depends on where your child wants to go. Yeah. So got got uh parents ask. If consistently need to join a math tuition class, okay, we okay. If your child is above ninety, we will recommend your child to go to the PPC, which is a less commitment one. Later we will talk about it. Yeah, we no need tell you to more join. Mm. Mm. Yeah, no need to join a tuition tuition. But you want to keep the engine going, right? <laughs> you don't want to you yeah. Uh, uh, unexpected situations are a shock. Yeah. we don't shock lah. So I, I mean PPC quickly I shared lah because like for math right. It requires yeah. a lot of consistency. I think very much for science as well. You see, like science MCQ is 28 questions. Yeah. And then for math, mm -hmm. right, it is like 45 marks. So in PPC, we don't do so simple and basic questions. So we assume that it is well supported at home and the child has this consistency in scoring well for paper one or booklet A for science. Uh, so there are some kids who thought that PPC is magical. Then they just join PPC. Then in the end, their paper two score extremely well. Their booklet B so well. But the other component got neglected. Yeah. Right? <laughs> yeah. So yeah. so it's like, wow, oh, we're so good at cooking all the big dishes. Then we forgot how to cook the rice very well. Then turn out too soggy. Hey, I think yeah, you so you need to have balance. What, what is PPC? We go on to the next slide. Parents let's go on, let's go yeah. on. Oh, yeah. Oh, what's PPC? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, it's a secret. Yeah, it's a yeah, secret. Yeah, it must stay on. Ask. It must stay on to the end. So, so these children actually, um, 
Hey, where, where? Okay, so this this Ian is a is a boy that was with us, and what he did was he was very consistent in his learning, and that helped him to score very well throughout. And then we have uh another student who was very good at self studying. Okay, so this child uh was very busy swimming all the time until like she only watch watches our videos for self-learning and help her to do very, very well at the end as well. Okay, what is PPCA? Wait, do you see the slide work properly? It says yeah. for PSLE preparatory course. Yeah, I've, I've already written. <laughs> <laughs> what is it all about? Uh, it's purely online. And there's, we there's, like this program. Yeah. Parents there's like this program. Hour. Yeah, it's only one hour per week. Yes, and parents like this program because there's basically no distraction uh, from noisy classes. It's very, very focused. It's only one hour, all right, per week. And the lessons are very intensive and very focused. So you, the result is we have a whole class of very focused kids who are more motivated than us, I feel, at times to get the AL1. So this PPC class, our success rate is extremely high, right? So um, yes, it's only online, right? Okay, if your son is P5 next year, then it's EPC, exam preparatory course. Yes, also can opt for the class. Okay, but uh, we will go talk about PPC. Okay, so all the lessons are recorded and your child can definitely download to view them anytime and you can attend the lessons with your child. So a lot of parents, okay, they like this because they attend the lessons with their child so that they are also aligned to their to, to the PSLE or the P5 exams demands, the content, the curriculum, and they will be aligned to also, you know, um, help them to revise and the parents actually know the direction. So in short, two people can sit in for our lessons, no problem. Okay, yeah, okay, okay. Okay, I'm, I'm typing something for the parent. Okay, there okay. you go. Okay. Okay, so how, all right, that we do this uh, is weekly worksheets and notes, hard copy mailed to you, all right? There's no soft copy because of copyright, okay? But it's all hard copy and the notes. And uh, uh, I mean, if your child review our online videos, the answer key is there, right? And during the live sessions, we will be teaching the concepts, but uh, the questions are of more challenging, higher order, like uh, teacher Faith has mentioned, right? Because we expect the children to already have the basic. So we are showing the kids the very difficult and challenging PSI question because why children usually don't score the AR1 and 2, right? It is because of these difficult questions and we are getting them prepared. So we will highlight the important pointers. We'll remind them of the exam skills, you know, We'll tell them the exam strategy. We'll tell them how the uh, PSLE are marked. Because both of us, we have marked PSLE for at least 10 years, right? And for myself, I was a chief examiner. So I am very, very familiar with the whole um, system, right? So we'll tell the children, these are the compliant answers. You want to score, you follow. <laughs> you know, and then, you know, all the kids. And we will, and the kids are very, very motivated. So the energy is great. Yeah, the whole dynamics. Okay, parents, you, you cannot imagine Everyone is just very focused, every lesson. Yeah. Okay. Yes. So Check yeah, it. some some children, some parents say that the kids come focus in online. Mm. Uh, but we don't see that for for a one hour class, I think it's just all right. It's just perfect. So those who have short attention span, right? I know you're talking about a two hour lesson or a three hour lessons on Zoom. It's quite different. So a one hour is intense. It's focused and it's efficient, very effective as well. Okay, so who is this we want for? students. Yeah, who is this for? Okay, uh, we put four first. We actually have a minimum mark uh requirement, right? Uh, it's because uh, like we say, the PPC doesn't teach the basic concept, right? So just now, as uh, I've gone through the science part. If your child is um like at a certain mark range, then the requirements, you know, the learning requirements are very different. 
because very likely your child needs to go back maybe to the basic and review it, okay? So PPC is actually for uh, children who are already scoring 75 marks. Am I correct, Okay, But mm -hmm. if your child is at 70 to 75, let us know, right? Let us have a look at the paper and then we'll review, all right? We will, mm -hmm. so this one is to push the AL4s to AL1 and 2, right? So we want children who wants to know how to tackle exam questions effectively in a smart way, right? Okay, so we're stretching. So this is a advanced stretching your kids program, right? So and our success rate is very high. So for science, right, uh, our AL1 and 2, right, is at like 95%. Almost everyone will get AL1 or 2, okay? For math as well, it's very, very high because they are all very motivated, you know, and they every week there's homework. Every week there is homework and the kids are always doing their work consistently. In fact, um, we only have a handful that we need to chase. We we, we mm. hardly have to do that. In fact, the kids will chase us. Have you marked my mm. work? Have you marked? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, so they are, they, are, they are very hungry. They, they want to score. They want to do well, right? Okay, so this is a, a program to stretch them, right? So there are two uh, timings. Monday is math. And then science is on Tuesday. And we're starting on a fresh year, right? 30 lessons in all. All the way, the last lesson is PSLE week, right? So, and recordings are always made available, right? Thank you, everyone. Thank you for staying back. Thank yeah. you. Thank you for joining yeah. us today. Thank you for joining us.